Oh man. Good yeah. morning, everybody. Here is where we are gonna start. Uh, welcome to Florida, outside of Jacksonville, where a kind uh, gentleman named John Campion, who is not sitting with us right now, uh, but he will be with us later, has invited me to drive his fleet of rally cars, which is crazy. So this is Andrew. Thank you for joining me, sir. Thank you for having Andrew me. Andrew Schwab, uh, an engineer at John's shop. You uh, you take care of these cars? Yes, sir. So day boy, in, day out. Boy, do we have a lineup for us. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have some fun. So uh, stick around, because this is going to be a really neat series of videos. And uh, as I do, the cars will get progressively crazier and nuttier and scarier as we go. But we begin with an interesting story. The Lotus Ford, Ford Lotus Cortina Mark II. Tell me about this car, Andrew. This car is actually uh, something John had wanted for a very long time. His father actually owned this car and he had had a bunch of pictures of him and, and you know and his dad alongside this car dad. or one just like um, this? one one just like okay, it so yeah. not exactly this car but um, a buddy of his was looking around the market and said hey you know I found one of those Cortinas you're looking for and John's like well you know what kind of how, how is it what kind of shape it's in and he says you know you're not gonna believe this this thing's just got fully restored and it looks great and John's like you know well let's check it out the, everything checks out let's buy it so the next day this thing shows up at the shop you know we really haven't touched looking the car. just like just like yeah, it does now. just like this i mean we changed the steering wheel we did uh some suspension work because the front struts were blown but that's literally that's it. it that's all we did and the things were running like a top ever since and john's in love with it because he gets to you know show he it off the, like he even put his dad's old license plate on i the, saw that that's very the car cool. so well really let's cool. have a drive and see what it's uh what it's about so um Lotus Cortina is basically a one of these Ford Cort Cortinas re-engineered, imagined by Lotus, right? Exactly. They helped them out. They exactly. co-developed it. So it's a 1.6, right? Yes. 1. 1. 6. And it makes about I think 110 horsepower or so, and it weighs nothing. If that. 2,000 yeah. pounds. It weighs right? nothing. So Feels. this this is what is it a 67? Eight. The Mark II is like 67 to 70, I think. Uh, I believe it's a 67. 67. Don't quote me on that just yet. Well, it's uh, it's very pretty and it's very clean. And we're going to pause this video while we wait. Eh, or maybe not. We don't have to wait very long. The uh, Florida uh, police, or Jacksonville police, have been very kind to us today to allow us to be out here. All right, is it a four speed car? It's or actually a five, five speed. speed. Can I, can I wind it out a little Absolutely. bit and let it breathe? Absolutely. Listen let it breathe. To that. Let it breathe. This thing needs to be needs to be driven. It needs to run high. Yes. So is that is a twin cam engine? I it think? is a twin cam. Full overhead cam? Yep. Oh man, nice day in Florida for a drive. And so this was sort of a I'm gonna roll the windows up a bit so we can hear. It's gonna get hot, but this was sort of a uh, touring car, rally car, club racer back in the day. Yeah, they rallied the hell out of this thing back in the day, and the whole thing was because you could get them so cheap, everybody and their mother ran out and grabbed one and said, "Hey, let's you know, let's hop it up the best we can." Oh wait, lower it. Four speed. Four speed. I looked. For, I looked for a fifth, and I didn't find one. Let me try again. No, I'm pretty sure right. there's only four of them. You oh, want to try it? I oh, think man. It's not... Don't listen oh, to me. Andrew. You know what I'm talking Andrew, about. Andrew, you're Never mind. killing me. I think it's only four, but that's okay. So it was like a, like a disposable car back exactly. in the day. Exactly, exactly. And believe me, they crashed a lot of them. Here we go. Foot... Oh, no. <laughs> and clear. <laughs> and it's interesting driving this car right now as opposed to when the front struts were shot. Because it was just bound, it was it was all oh, yeah. over the place. Yeah. It's like looking at one of those old Lincolns driving around New York City, and it's just going up and down, up and down, up and down, and never stops going up and down. I feel like this is gonna be like like the Nissan 240 in 20 years. Exactly, exactly. You know, where they're just so available and disposable that no one cares. I tell you what, I had to go out of my way to seek a guy who had suspension components for this. Turns out I found a guy, a very nice gentleman in uh, England, who's had a shop, a family-owned shop for about 30 years. And I, I told him what I needed, and I sent him some pictures, and he said, give me a minute, I think I got a pair on the shelf that's been there for about 25 years. 40 years. Yeah. <laughs> so he, sure enough, he ran and he grabbed them for me and uh, shipped them, you know, he shipped them overnight. And, Got these things in the mail. 
Well, it feels Great. super light on its feet. It's got nice inputs. The shifter's very direct. Four speeds. Four speed. <laughs> Let's see, brakes. Oh, the brake pedal's nice and tight. Is this disc brakes, this car? It is disc brakes. So Ford of Europe, like... Headed in the right direction. They were headed in yeah. the right direction back in the day. And the this motor loves so to do whatever you want it to do. It'll scream all day or it'll yeah. putt butt like a lawnmower. How does it, let's, let me go like, let me see how it, how it likes your putt putty lawnmowerness. Yep. Let's see. It really, it's really happy like at high RPMs. Like even right now, I'm at 4,000 RPM. Hello. But if I go down like, even now, like yeah. now I feel like I'm puttering. Yeah. But that's 3,000 RPM. Right. I'm gonna slow down even more and really Putter in. So here's 2,000 RPM. Yeah, it's not as much fun as, as it turns fun. out. Great pedals for uh, for heel towing. It rides good. It rides good now. Oh my God, I'm I'm dying though. Yeah. It's got to be 125, 130 yep. degrees in here right now. Welcome to Florida. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, this is cool. Let's uh, let's find a spot and flip her around. Well, I'll tell you what's really awkward. This this polished steering wheel center. I'm really just looking at my own face. Yep, yep. <laughs> Let me tell you. And it's not a complimentary angle. No, no. <laughs> that steering wheel was a big deal. John saw the original and he said, "Oh no, we're putting a wood one on." Did it? Did it? Oh boy. Uh, well. Yeah, that was a little sketch. He really wait. We really he had a lot of room, and he waited until the last minute there, didn't he? Welcome to again. Welcome, welcome to, Florida. to Florida. I'm just gonna flip. I'm just gonna do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Rally car. Sure. How's the turning radius? It is interesting. Good. Wow. Better than the Focus RS. Better I'll tell than the you Fo that. Focus RS terrible. Focus turning RS radius. turns like a bus. Listen, to, when you, it's really yeah. about when you hit the clutch to shift. This sound here. That's awesome. Fantastic. That's awesome. Yeah, to you, does this feel car? Does this car feel more British than American? To you? Oh, absolutely. This feels absolutely. like a European car. I don't. I don't really get any America from this car at all. If it wasn't for the weather right now, I think we were in England. Right. <laughs> so this. So is this steering wheel like hard to come by or just better no, looking? No, no. Um, a company called Moto Lita, yeah. you know, makes these replicas for pretty much everything you can you can yeah. imagine, and they make them they make them really nice. I mean, it's a it's a good high quality wheel, and it's basically a direct swap out. That's you know, cool. some time with some Allen keys and some flathead uh, screwdrivers, and you're you're off to owning a new steering wheel, which is nice because you know. We're gonna, we're gonna have some passing to make in a second. Do you? Tell me about, because when I open the hood to uh, to get the engine shots, tell me about the muffler as an air cleaner. Well, the muffler has a very interesting story behind it. And one of the things was, what, one, of the, one, of the, one of the stories behind it, I'm not sure if it's entirely true, but when the thing, you know, it's, obviously it's the Euro car, so when they had to bring it in the States, it actually didn't have an air cleaner on it. At all. And they, right, and obviously the guys that, help me out here, the guys that, not the emissions control guys, but oh, yeah, the uh, other guys. Oh, CARB? Some, yeah, one of those regulation... Uh, yeah, emissions people. Went, right. Yeah. NHSTA? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They looked at it and they said, well, we can't pass this thing. This is illegal. It doesn't even have an air filter on it. So the word on the word on the street through the rumor mill for many years is that they, they grabbed these guys, they distracted them for a while, and meanwhile, the guy had his mechanic run to the, you know, run, run somewhere in the back and grab literally a muffler. It's a muffler. muffler. Grab an empty muffler. The most stereotypical looking exactly. muffler that there is. You should is. probably get a shot of that. I no have one. one. Would I believe have. you. Don't worry. You. No, I have right. one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And they literally hooked it up to the carbs with some, you know, with some fabricated piping. It's hilarious. And the guy came back and they said, look, here's your air cleaner. And he said, okay, it's, you know, the car's passed. And then they built them like right. that. Right. And they built them like that. It's sort of a trademark. That's so funny and They're really crazy. funny, right? Nothing in there, by the way. No, no air component. It's just completely no hot. air cleaning element <laughs> by any means. So this has no air filter of any Absolutely kind. Absolutely not. That's so funny. So was this back in '67? 
this was sold as a road car, right? Yep. This would be the car. equivalent of a Focus RS, more or less, right? It's not value-wise back in the day, absolutely. Same price, right? No, no, not any different. I mean, that's why those old Focus, uh, even the Escorts, are, yeah. were so popular back then. It's because they were so affordable. Okay, here we go. Ready? Oh yeah. Oh, I can't. I don't have enough room. It's oncoming. We'll get them. Oh. How about a, now? There's just so much oncoming. All right, I'm gonna need to find a pull off because this engine sounds way too good. Here we go. I'm just gonna just gonna pull off and hang out right here for a second and uh, let some traffic clear. And I'm gonna three pointer. We'll be right back. Where well, that's reverse down. Uh, yeah, down into the right. All right. What do you say? We. What do you say? Full a full four gear pull. Absolutely. Here we go. I could get used to that sound, man. Cars with twice as much horsepower don't sound that. Oh, much. it's beautiful. You know, it's the muffler as an air cleaner. Right, that's the air what cleaner. It is. Oh, what a lovely little cruiser it is. It's fun. I drove in New Zealand a, a Vauxhall Viva. Ooh, that was. Yeah. It had a little. It had the guy put a Mazda six in it, but it was like it was this exact vibe of this two box design. Same thing with like a, that old Julietta, right? Old Alpha sedan. How do you like that car? Julia. The new one or the old one? The new Julia? Yeah, the new one that just came out. Uh, they're very pretty and they drive good, okay. but every one that me or any of my friends have tested is broken. Brakes. Yeah. Okay. Let me tell you, no shocker there. <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, so you've got, you, well, John has, and you care for, a garage full of mostly Italian vehicles. And then you've yep. got this little Ford Lotus thing. Italian and German is the vibe at the moment. Yeah. Is this, I mean, as a collector car, like, is this a reliable car? Like, do, do I, I tell you what, I can't believe how reliable this thing has been. Shockingly so. And he drives it in the cooler months, Listen drives it all the time. <laughs> oh, listen to that. That is just delightful. And look, here we are, and there is a, a partial fleet of rally cars. Wow, okay. Lotus Cortina Mark II. Very cool car. Uh, thank you, Andrew, for your knowledge and your enthusiasm. Absolutely. But uh, I think, I don't want to say a number in case it doesn't happen. We have at least... <laughs> at least five more cars to drive, oh, yeah. as many as seven more cars to drive. Just getting warmed keep, up. Uh, big ups to uh, Andrew here for uh, for being a great guest, as well as to Mr. John Campion for having me down here, who I hope we get to converse with a bit later. We're going to hop out of the Lotus Cortina. We are going to hop into the Lotus Cortina's younger brother, the Ford Escort Mark I rally car. Deliciousness. Oh, it's right there. It's going to be so good. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow.